evaporates when you see those clouds up there. Evaporation and condensation. The water cycle, the water cycle. Followed by precipitation. The water cycle, the water cycle. On a cellular level, no species on Earth can survive indefinitely without water. The planet is covered about 75% of water, out of which about only less than 1%, not even 1% is fresh water. Water is absolutely essential to every facet of human life, from growing our crops to drinking to washing. There's no panacea for water supply on Earth. Due to climate change and intensification of land use in Australia, there'll certainly be water quantity issues. So what that means for Australia in particular is that wherever you've got it, you have to use it and reuse it. So if we have less and less uh, freshwater sources, we have to think about in these kind of technologies that would help uh, to sustain life. Membrane technology, as I said, basically uh, human mankind copied the nature. Nature's developed over millions and millions of years so you have to imagine that it's been developed fairly well and fairly efficiently. All the membranes work by the fact that the water passes through the membrane, the contaminants don't. So it functions like your kidney, for example, in order to separate uh, the liquid and the solids uh, within your human body. Using hollow fibre technology, you're primarily taking out bacteria, microbes, viruses. So uh, under gentle suction, we are pulling uh, through the membrane, clean water. Uh, the pore size here we're talking about is 0.04 micron. And it's once you start getting down to that sort of level, you stop talking about the physical size of it and you talk about it in a molecular size. Parasites like Cryptosporidium and Giardia that you can get in the surface water, they have a size of 3 to 6 micron. In 1974, I moved to Townsville. First fell in love with coral reefs as a diver. Cleveland Bay was the first that has employed the uh, membrane barrier technology, also very close to the Great Barrier Reef. The pollutants of concern in sewerage wastewater for coral reef systems anyway are nitrogen and phosphorus, and they cause eutrophication. That's where you get excessive plant growth, and coral reefs uh, don't like that at all. Uh, implementing the membrane barrier technology at Cleveland Bay has uh, ensured a much higher quality water that is discharged to the outfall, to the reef itself. So it's a huge reduction in the macronutrients to the marine environment. I'm optimistic for solutions to water quality management for the Great Barrier Reef, and I'm still certainly in love with coral reefs. Evaporation and condensation. The water cycle, the water cycle. Followed by precipitation. The water cycle, the water cycle. Ten years ago, there were no decentralised water treatment plants. Now we've got six in Sydney. In a decentralised system, the water cycle is about, um, you know, water in equals water out, but often it might come out as, a, as like a wastewater. And then do you choose to just discharge that to the environment and lose it, or do you choose to recycle it within that water cycle? I think that it's a really good opportunity for us to reduce the amount of really high quality water that's being used for applications that don't need that sort of quality of water. It is very important to educate the public that the water should be judged by its quality and not by its origin. We are producing you know, recycled water that is equal to a drinking water standard and that gives them the confidence to be able to use it in a variety of ways. For things like watering the garden, even something as simple as washing the car, which traditionally or over the last five or ten years of drought have been cut off as um, activities you're allowed to do with potable water at your house. The technology is proven and in the way that they have presented this technology, it's very robust. It's able to be automated, so it's been very, very helpful in our business. To my mind, what that means and the benefits for people like developers is that they have the flexibility to build a treatment plant in an area that the major water utility may not service yet. It has huge potential and it can only continue to grow and as this marketplace you know, grows, uh, then membrane technology will grow with it. 
I think that we have a real market leading position in Australia on putting in more decentralised systems and actually enabling or allowing people to use the resources that are literally travelling under our feet. I find it really interesting that water's changing in the social perspective from being a commodity to being a precious resource. It is fundamentally critical for life on this planet. The never ending cycle is taking place all the time and everywhere.